happening? Why isn't it even showing? This is what it should show. Why is it not showing that? What's even happening? Okay. That's the way. It's the way. There, there it goes. Okay. Some skills and spells have reduced effectiveness when used in player versus player or PvP combat. That's true. That's true. Like, for example, a uh, Rep Paladin has Repentance, and Repentance is like sap for a rogue. It takes someone out of combat for 60 seconds if it's like a PvE mob, player versus environment, which is the opposite of this PvP. PvP, when you're using it on another player, I think it's only like 8 to 12 seconds. Maybe it's even 6 to 8 seconds. And it could even be less than that if they have like reduction equipment. Like, I got one that it's like a, a gladiator, gladiator's trinket or medallion that it has like a internal cooldown, but it's like a 20%. One of them is a 25% right here. Duration of incoming crowd control effects increased by 25%. Uh, the duration of incoming crowd control effects increased by 25%. That doesn't sound good. So if somebody's going to crowd control me, the duration of that is increased. There's not a stack with similar effects when affected. When affected, protects from the next crowd control effect persisting for 12 seconds. Okay. So, PvP is... It, the, what, from what I understand reading this, is is more detrimental to you if you wear this. But you could become protected from the next crowd control effect after 12 seconds of of suffering uh, the initial crowd control effect that is 25% more effective on you. Uh, what? So if I'm slow and I have that trinket on, I'm more slow. And the next time I get slowed, I don't get slowed. For 12 seconds. I don't know. Can I kill this? I think I can. Let's pull out Poke Poke. Why did little beetle have to come over here? Oh, there's more. I made him mad. You hear my dragon's roar? I do not have the That's time. the Kaioken roar. He's like. Rrr. I did a PvP video and you could see me get rooted and I'm just frozen there. And if you listen, among all the battle sounds, you can hear my guy going, because his little dragon sounds going off. You hear that? Well, in the PvP video, I'm snared so it doesn't go off. So every global cooldown, you hear, because I'm sitting here spamming it. So I was like, sitting there intimidating the healer like by roaring at him because he wouldn't let me that that's what was happening in my mind at least and when i watch it back that's what i see so i get really excited but uh that's probably lost on anyone but me <laughs> i do a lot of shit like that i do a lot of uh posts and videos and content where most of it's really for my for my entertainment so i can laugh at it later and i really don't expect anyone else to get it but I think sometimes like I put things out there that even other people can get, but I don't know. Like it, look for that stuff. I would say look for that stuff. If you if you watch me or if you you're planning on watching more of me, look for that type of stuff because it's there. I put a lot of that stuff out there. None of this is scripted. Like I don't really even like write anything down or anything like that. I'm I'm just winging it. I'm I come on here and I'm just like trying to enjoy my game like I would be enjoying it anyways like because this is literally this is what I do with my free time I love this game I love games in general like I've been a gamer since I was young young like uh back in the I played Atari but I wasn't I wouldn't say I was a gamer when I played Atari like I didn't even understand what was going on but like I remember the joysticks and playing like the baseball game and stuff like that but it was like a very limited selection all the consoles I had ever played on were an afterthought it was like it's like okay we got everything in the house that we need and then oh look this was at a garage sale type but we got brand new consoles we got like playstations when we got older like we started to get some of the the more better ones 
but i remember nintendo 64 being out and i didn't have a nintendo 64 for the longest and uh we eventually got one and be playing like super smash brothers and mario 64 and all that but i never played golden eye i never played like there's a lot of these games that we're kind of in the zeitgeist growing up that I don't really know or have experienced. The Bioshock stuff, I've never really played any of the Bioshock stuff. Halo, like I was into Halo tournaments in like 2008 or so. Like um, we would do like LAN parties kind of like that. But that was like Halo 2 and I never played the story and I don't understand any of the Mass Effect stuff. So like... I'm a limited gamer. I'm a limited selection specific type of gamer. Uh, I like fighting games. I like competitive games. I like social games. The Sims, that's kind of pushing it. Like, I don't really enjoy playing games like The Sims anymore. Because of the time sync, first of all, it's kind of like strategy games. Like, we would play, uh, what was it? Not, it was, we would play Command and Conquer and uh, Sid, Sid, My, Sid Mir's, uh Civilization. And those types of games, but there was another game. It was like, uh, it's a, it was more of an OG game like that, though, kind of like Civilization. But I remember playing that one. You start in prehistoric era and work your way all the way to the, like the futuristic age. And I remember knowing like you can't upgrade too fast because if you upgrade too fast, the AI does too, and then you start getting rolled over. But yeah, I, I'm trying to remember what it was called. I don't know if it was a Sid Meier game or Sid Meier game. I want to say it was like Earth something? Earth? Like, I don't know. Empire Earth, maybe? Like, I, I can't remember. I, it's going to bother me until I remember what that is, but... Yeah, strategy games. I used to like real-time strategy games. I realized WoW used to be... Uh, it's, it's based off of real-time strategy stuff. I never played any of the old WoW stuff, but the arcade on the launcher shows the game with the dwarves. I do remember playing that game. That was like an old arcade game. It was like a laundry mat or something. I, I don't know if I played it on. It could have been also something on like an old 90s PC. Maybe if that was ever ported to that. I did have like a 90s PC and I would play games on uh, like the... I would have to type in the code, like the DOS code to start the disc. So it was like CD backslash, D drive, a run and then start, and then a game would start and it had like a hundred games on it. And they were all like bootleg games, like pressing keyboard keys to make your fighter throw a kick or a punch. It was like a fighting game. But they were like all these weird games, hundreds, and you could go through playing just any different game you want. That was during the Doom and uh, Duke Nukem era, Wolfenstein era. So yeah, I was into that stuff. We, we got into Doom, especially when you could get the cheats and get the God mode. I would just put on God mode so I couldn't die and then go through and do all the maps and try to find secrets and stuff like that. Cause there were like secret walls and stuff. That was cool. That's my my background as a gamer though. I've been trying to like get more in touch with that and try to figure out like where am I now? Like cuz I was a, a in my teenage years like I was a race racing games and fighting games player. Like I really like the racing games and fighting games. And uh it was Street Fighter 2 at first. I never got into Turbo. Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh I, we recently played uh Killer Instinct again because there was like a new version of Killer Instinct on on PlayStation I want to say and or maybe this was Xbox it wasn't it wasn't good though it wasn't where it was at I remember Killer Instinct gold on uh, the N64 and I'd play Saber Wolf and we would just tear up the joystick on them controllers because <laughs> uh, Saber Wolf specifically, you had to do like circles with the joystick and spam like, uh, you know, X or A or something like that. And he would do like cartwheels and uh, spinning claw attacks. 
and those were just like destroy our controllers till the joystick broke off we would just sit there and <laughs> spamming the buttons and stuff but Tekken was my shit for fighting games like that I really like Tekken all almost all of them Tekken tag was the best I used to remember being able to play like King with armor King tag and I would always do like King and law Brian and Hihachi But yeah, even fighting games, like, I don't know, man. Nowadays, when I started playing with more people, like, more of the world, I realized that, uh, in the arcades and all this stuff like that, it's all about the juggle combos, launching somebody first, and then once you launch them, like, juggle them until they die. And, I don't know, that's kind of cheesy. I never really liked that aspect. I would try to keep people grounded, and, and I would just run my, just, like, I would have like three or four sometimes five to twelve hit combos that I would pull out each like separate combos that I would put together in different combinations and uh, I would just use my favorite most flashy moves like that was how I like to play whatever the most flashy cool moves that I like the most I would try to pull those off and I would figure out ways to pull those off and uh, yeah it, it was it's really fun whenever you could do it like that where it felt like a real fight like an exchange where if they could get their moves off but it wasn't just like, if either one of you lands one move, the other just is going to get juggled for the whole match. <laughs> that's not fun. I don't think that's fun at all. Unless there's a way you can break out of that. Like, if there was, like, some double tap down to break out of the juggle, like, once every three seconds or something like that. And you can make a match to where it's not perpetual juggle combos. Then I think fighting games can go somewhere, or you'd get somewhere with a fighting game. It'd be interesting to see like an inertia, like momentum gathering fighting game where like if you could do more successive combos, like more of the favor of battle would go towards you and you could start to pull more progressively intricate or powerful moves off because of like the domination factor. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I always think of like what fundamentally is going on in this fighting game? Like it's a tug of war, right? What would be really interesting is if it was like a rock, paper, scissors tug of war at the same time. That's basically what any fighting game is, right? Then there's like positioning and like strict strategy and tactics. That's what I used to love about WoW. Like WoW's combat was another like one of those. Whenever I first came to this game, it was like a, one of those like quantum leaps in what I thought like competitive gaming could be. And with wow it's like even more interesting because it's like those real-time strategy turn-based games fundamentally like at its core it's like D, &D like the D, &D turn-based game and the way you could actually approach like a pack of enemies in a dungeon like nowadays you just get the most powerful gear and just charge straight in and grab the entire dungeon or half the dungeon and in like one big fell swoop nuke all the dungeon down with like your most powerful abilities and cooldowns and stuff it used to be though like back whenever i first started playing wow it used to be strategy there used to be tactics like you'd encounter a group of mobs and you'd be like okay we're gonna cc this one for one minute all right after i do that i need the lock to cc that one and uh there was like certain things about cc you had to understand for example like this i can do paralysis in combat and for all intents and purposes it's like basically repentance for a paladin but like a paladin and like a rogue uh or i should say unlike a paladin and a rogue i can use paralysis in combat as a monk but a paladin also he could use repentance in combat as a paladin there was a cast time but the rogue for example you had to know that he couldn't, because once the enemy was in combat, they could no longer be sapped. I don't think that's the case with Repentance, but I could be mistaken. Maybe it depends on the expansion. But the Paladin's Repentance, I remember it was like a one-time use. And if you had like a Hunter, you know that you could then Ice Trap. Like, after the Repentance fell off. If the, if the encounter was still going on, because sometimes like when you had a group of four or five mobs... You didn't have the best gear in the game, so you would actually fight these creatures for quite a while. You would say, okay, so since this repentance is about to fall, fall off, or when the sap falls off, I want the hunter to come in and follow up with the trap, because the hunter can trap in real time. Or you could say, rogue, use your blind and give us another 60 seconds after the sap falls off. 
Or a lot of the times, uh, come to think of it, the rogue would just know that that's what he had to do. He would just keep an eye or even set focus on his repentance or his sap rather. And then he would just like blind whenever his sap fell off. And the same was true for mages and their sheeps. You could have a mage that was tracking the sheep. Sheep moon mage. And then he would just make sure that it got re-sheeped. But yeah, you used to be able to pick apart and take groups of mob down, mobs down one at a time. And it felt like it, it was more dangerous. Like it felt more like threatening because if one of you actually accidentally broke the sheep, well now you, you instead of just fighting the two, the skull and the X, now you got the the squares coming and running up. And since everybody's AOEing, like there's no chance of retrapping, so things get a bit more dangerous. Mana cost. There used to be a mana cost, so you couldn't just sit there in perpetual combat because eventually, like you'd run out of resources. So like there was also the, sh the resource management, there was timing, there was positioning, like there was so much about like combat that was like intricate, it kept, like it felt it, like not punishing, but it felt rewarding whenever you got through a pack of mobs that was particularly difficult. Even if you had the group or the dungeon on farm, like you would still feel good about getting through those tough packs in a more seamless way. Like, for me, the game always becomes efficiency. It's like, after I've done everything I need to do, like, there's kind of a treadmill of what you need to continue to do. And the stuff that you continue to do in these games are best done the most efficient way possible. Because then, like, you can get on to actually playing the game or doing something you enjoy more. But there's a certain amount of upkeep that, uh, you just want to make more and more efficient. And I guess that's the problem with, uh, over gearing you get to a point to where you can make the whole game kind of trivial and you don't get to work through those packs like that those very strategic ways and i would think i was kind of like in my mind whenever i heard about mythics and stuff like that come into the game back in wrath of the lich king uh i used to love farming heroics that's my uh not my green proto drake but my red proto drake was doing all the achievements for all the bosses in the game in Wrath of the Lich King for all the, the heroics. And it was pretty difficult, but like, it felt like it was an actual like hard achievement and everything, but it wasn't timed. Like there were certain aspects, like certain fights where maybe there was some element of timing or whatever, but heroics, the way we used to farm them with our tabards to get reputation, I used to love that. Put on a tabard for who you want to get rep with, and then just go do dungeons and you get rep with that faction. I used to max out all my factions that way, because I would just stay farming those heroics, because there was always one or two items that were the best in slot that I could always go after that I never really got. So I would just rerun the same dungeons, and that was a lot of the game throughout the week for me until raid night. Um, and then I would always just like, I guess the money I would make from that would allow me to pay for, you know, upgrades and stuff like that this, or repairs. My fellow I forget what I was talking about because I don't know what this is. Harrier probably? This is the DPS? Oh, okay. We just gotta kill Mossorn. But yeah, I mean, that... Yeah. That path of progression and stuff back then, that was, uh, was where it was at. I, I like the way that... Oh, I was gonna say, before Mythics were born, I used to think Mythics were gonna be, like, heroics, but even better, like, even harder, like, more challenging and, uh, more rewarding even. But I never considered there'd be a time aspect. Of course, like, like I said, once you've done something so many times, efficiency becomes, like, the, the meta or the end game, in a way. So it would make sense that uh it, you would have a timer because then like that becomes the game like like in a formula one track the the, the race car driver's just trying to beat the previous lap record but i don't feel like i don't know it's it's the the way the keys can downgrade and then the timing like the, a lot of that ab the, about the mythic system kind of rubs me the wrong way because I've had a, a lot of keys that I've had just like, I've tried to run and level up and, and, dr and uh, like, complete them, but they would just get drained they would, because we wouldn't make the timer or one person would leave the group and we would try to like four man the rest and it took even longer. But I feel like there's a filtering, just like in PvP, there's a filtering 
before your your level or item level kind of gets past a certain point that's part of the reason why i'm doing mythics because i don't even know if i can even still speak intelligently about mythics nowadays because i don't even know what the affixes are or anything like that or like i don't even know what the current expansions dungeons are for mythic it looked like i could like right here gdg mbt and all this stuff like i know this is workshop upper karazhan lower karazhan is this strat like i don't know yard i don't i don't know what that is i don't know what some of these dungeons are but yeah i'm gonna be getting into those and doing those this week i think that's what this sign of the warrior is about i think uh i need to go to orbis and pick up that weekly mythics oh and i was gonna show you my vault okay let's go show you the vault first because I can come back and do these later, right? This is an hour and a half. Maybe I go do that one. Since this doesn't have a timer. Oh, this is what it was. I was going to do up here as well. The uh, weekly. Because when I start looking for groups, I can't be in group finder for that. Alright, so this is going to expire soon. So we'll do these. I'm going to go to Oribus and pick up the weekly and show you all my vault. And uh, yeah, we'll just, I'll come back whenever that's happening. For now, but okay. We must remain vigilant. We must remain, okay, so we, we finished that one. And we're gonna go turn that in. That was Fruit of the Balloon, I believe. Oh, Antros, let's go do Antros next. Let's do the boss. Okay, Antros is the world boss in Xerath Mortis. It doesn't look like anybody's running any groups. Let's keep refreshing. Our scouts speak of a harrowing presence. We may be too early. Oh, here we go. We cannot allow this menace to remain. There's two of us? Our scouts speak of a harrowing presence threatening the northern island. Our homie Brick down there. Brick the hunter. The orc hunter. The DPS orc hunter. Ah, uh, here we go. We're filling right up. We're filling right up. CTR, man. There you go. CTR. Shout out CTR. It's been a long time, guys. Back whenever I first found Mike Preach Wow and used to listen to his videos on my way to school every, like, it was every weekday I would have night classes. It was an hour drive up there, an hour drive back. So I'd watch and listen to a lot of Preach Drama Time and Preach Guides and videos and stuff like that. Miss the Pandaria time frame, I want to say. Uh, I would also listen to CTR, Convert to Raid. A uh, podcast about WoW and uh, WoW rating and WoW news and all this. It was like when I first started getting into the WoW community outside of just the people I played with in real life. But yeah, CTR. Shout out CTR. And uh, Coltrane. Coltrane. And, you know, uh, the, the, the main streamer, like I should know his name. He does the morning stream. The morning stream. Uh, I really should know his name. I'm sorry. I'm gapping. But yeah, shout out to all them guys. Coltrane specifically, I only know his name because he's in DBM. I would have him do my countdown where he'd be like, One. Two. Like, in the Coltrane voice. Control Calamity, guys. If you know, you know. No. <laughs> if you know, you know. Man, my FPS is 18 right now. Oh, my hit points is half right now. Man, I've been having technical issues too, guys. Like, you, you see my scuff camera. I want to get a new camera. I'm going to get a new camera eventually. I got, I got children, man. I got sons. I got two sons. One just graduated. He's starting a life. Trying to start his life. And uh, I got a 13-year-old. He's going back to school this year, so he's going to be actually in school. I took him out of school and homeschooled him last year. We had a little taste of that during the coronavirus, so that was cool, but I think he, he kind of likes the social aspect of like having friends and stuff like that, so he's going to go to school. And, uh, yeah, we, we gotta get him clothes and shoes and 
we got him some shoes and it was like a week later he outgrew them. we're like oh shit man uh we'll get you some more shoes so we got him some more shoes and uh we're getting him clothes and stuff and I got him a computer desk. I gave him that chair because it doesn't stay up any for, for me anymore. The hydraulics, like when the, when you get those hydraulic chairs and they start to wear out and you start getting a little heavier while they're wearing out, they start to go tss, tss, and you sink all the way down. He's lighter than I am, so I gave him the chair. I was like, here, man, you're not going to make this sink down. 